Rod, the Twins had an exciting finish to the 2015 season. What we didn't know at the time was you were fighting for your life. Tell the viewers what was going on and what seemed like a harmless round of golf it turned into a very frightening situation. Well, we had finished the lightning night walk at the stadium the, on the 19th. On the 20th, I went out and I thought, I go to this little golf course, go hit some balls, drop three or four balls, and you know, just practice. And after I hit the first one off the first tee, I felt this burning in my chest. And the next thing that happened is my hands started getting clammy. So I just left the ball, got out of my cart, backed it up to the clubhouse, walked in, laid on the floor, propped my legs up, and there's a lady and a little boy there, a young man. I said, please call the paramedics and call them right now. And that's, that's all I remembered. They called it the Widowmaker. I wasn't supposed to live. So I think the heart attack just destroyed my heart. There's the physical damage that was caused, but also I know you're concerned about the emotional recovery, maybe spiritual recovery. Where are you on that timeline? You know, the thing that I found myself doing a lot, Rick, is talking in my sleep. And um, my son told me, he says, yeah, Dad, you were giving me hitting lessons the other day. You know, and I just cracked up. Emotionally, I was a wreck because I cried every single morning. When Rhonda would leave to go back for the evening, you know, I didn't know if I was gonna see her again. And so I cried. And you're better now, and, and I think what fans want more than anything else is to know that the future is there for you to continue to get better. What lies ahead, do you think, you hope, for Rod Carew? I really hope that in a couple of months, you know, they're gonna check my liver and check the kidneys and see, because they, they took a hit um, during uh, my surgery. And hopefully three, four months, if everything looks good, they will put me on a uh, list to get a, a new heart. So I don't want an old man's heart. <laughs> I want a young man's heart. What is the, the, the top age where one would even be considered for a heart transplant? I think because, because of my health, you know, and I, I'm, I'm you know, pretty, in pretty good shape. Um, I don't know exactly what the age limit is, but they're looking at maybe a couple of months, um, and if they do find me a heart, great. If they don't, then I have my batteries, I, I can continue to be the bionic man. This uh, bionic man business, what do you mean by that? You are mechanically kept alive, right? Yes, I am. You know, I, I have a bag. This, is, this, this bag right here is called Honey, after my wife. So wherever I go, I have to take this bag with me because it has a little computer system in there that exactly like the one I'm wearing. Then I have two batteries that I have to keep charged all the time. So besides this, when I travel, I have a wall unit that plugs into, into my body so that I can sleep all night. My favorite Jackie Robinson quote is, uh, life is only significant in its impact on others. That's paraphrasing what Jackie said, but I think of you often whenever I come across that quote because of what you did years ago out of Michelle's tragedy, raising awareness for bone marrow uh, donations and registry and all that, and now this Heart of 29 campaign. That's something you must feel pretty good about, that here you are, this Hall of Fame baseball Somebody player. Somebody up there likes me. <laughs> you know? But within you, that you've, you've got this soul of generosity that you can 
turn negative things into something positive? Well, it started right here in the Twins organization. You know, having to be around Tony Oliva and him teaching me how to carry myself on the field, off the field. And then another very important person in my life is Harmon Kilber. It's always told me, Rod, that it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You know, when I hear athletes say that they don't want to be role models or they don't care about this or care about that, it really bothers me because I go back to what Harmon told me. You know, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. <laughs>